Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to design your project horizontally, but cut it vertically. And you may be wondering why you would do that. And mainly the reason you would do that is because it's easier to visualize horizontally, like we see here, but your machine X axis may not be large enough to cut a project this size. So in that case, you'd have to design it like this to be able to fit on your machine. And you can see from this picture here, the X direction is generally left to right, and the Y direction is generally top to bottom. Now that will not be true for all machines, but that is generally the case with most CNC machines. So since I have a longer Y axis, whenever I want to cut a long project, it's generally best to design it in the Y axis. But we can see when we go back to Vetric, it may be a little bit difficult to visualize how this project will look in the end when it's vertical on your screen. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques that you can use to design horizontally and then switch it vertically when you're ready to cut. So we're going to start a new project and I'm using Aspire, but this will also work in Cut2D and VCarve as well. So let's create a new file. And to start with, we're going to design horizontally. So our longer measurement is going to be in the width, which is in the X axis. So we're going to do 48 for this example and we'll do 24 for the height and we'll do three quarter inch thick. And then you can decide where you want your zero positions for the Z and the X and Y. And something like we're about to do would be easier if you were to zero off the center position. But for this example, I'm gonna show you the lower left position because that's the most commonly used zero position. So now we're gonna click okay. And here's where you can design or import your project. I'm just gonna import a project so I'm just going to import my logo here and then you can position it however you like. I'm going to make it centered by clicking the F9 key on my keyboard. And then I'm also going to use my scale tool and I'm going to make it about 40 inches wide. Making sure my X and Y is linked together, click apply. And also making sure the anchor position was set to the center as well. So now our sign is nice and centered and it is scaled up to the size we want it. So we're going to click close. So once we are finished with our design or import, we can go over to our toolpaths. So we're going to bring up our toolpath tab. We're going to pin that on the screen and let's just make a simple VCarve toolpath for the text in here. So we're going to go to VCarve and I'm just going to do a flat depth of one eighth of an inch. I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit and I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill to do the clearance. So this is a pretty simple toolpath. We're going to click calculate and then we can preview both of those toolpaths and we can see what this looks like. Now we can go to our next toolpath, which would be the profile. So we'll select that line, close the preview, go to our profile toolpath and we're going to go through all the way through the material. We're going to go with a quarter inch end mill and we're going to go on the outside of the line. I'll just leave it like that for this example. Click calculate and preview selected. And now we could double click on the waste to remove it and preview what the final project would look like. So this is going to be the point where you want to make sure this is exactly the way you want it because our next step is going to be rotating it vertically. So this is the best way you want to visualize it first. And you can also save a preview image if you were sending it to a customer or something. Okay, so now let's reset our preview and close this preview down. Let's go back to our 2D view. So let's say we have it exactly the way we wanted it and we have our toolpath set up exactly the way we want those as well. So if you're using an older version of Vetric, you can go back up to the job setup and then you can rotate the measurements right here by just switching the two dimensions. So the width would become 24 and the height would become 48. But since we're using version 11, I'm going to cancel this and I'm actually going to use the sheet option instead. And the reason I'm going to use the sheets is because I can now revert back to this design if I needed to. So I can actually rename this design. We can name it project rendering. That way we know it's just the rendering. And then we can come down to the bottom and click add new. And this one we can name project uh, cut file. 
And by default, it's going to be exactly the same size as the previous sheet. So we can right click on that one, click edit. And now this new sheet, which you can see is separate from the first sheet. We can change this value to 24 for the width and 48 for the height. So basically we just switch those numbers around and then you can confirm your zero positions. These can be different from the first sheet and we can click OK. Okay, so now you see we have one sheet horizontal and one sheet vertical. So if we double click on that first sheet, select all of the objects on this sheet, and then we can right click on these, go down to copy to sheet, and we're gonna copy it on the project cut file sheet. And you'll see that will go over to this sheet. So now we can double click on that one, select all of our objects again, and now we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So there's a couple different ways you can do that pretty quickly. You can click the letter R key on your keyboard. That's gonna open up your rotate tool. And then we can just type in 90 degrees here, click apply, and that will rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. If you want it to go the other way, let's undo. We can do negative 90 degrees, click apply, and that will rotate it clockwise 90 degrees. So we can close that when you're done. Another way you can do that, if I undo, without opening any tools, you can hit the number nine key or the number zero key on your keyboard. So if you select all your objects here, click the number nine key, that'll rotate 45 degrees counterclockwise. And then if you click it one more time, that'll rotate a full 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then the number zero will do the exact opposite. That'll rotate 45 degrees in the clockwise direction. So I'm gonna make it the counterclockwise direction. And now we can move this wherever we need it to. If you want it exactly centered, just click the F9 key on your keyboard and that will center it exactly in the same position as the first sheet. But if you wanted to move it in exact location, you can use your move tool to move it somewhere else. I'm just gonna keep it centered for this project. So now we're ready for our tool pass. And unfortunately, you cannot copy over the toolpaths from the first sheet. So we would have to create new toolpaths for this new sheet. But if you just use those toolpaths, all of your settings are still gonna be saved. So all we have to do is select the same vectors, go back to the same toolpath, which would be V carving. And you can see all of the settings are gonna be remembered from the last toolpath. So we can click calculate and then preview these and you'll see they'll be exactly the same. Then we can go back to our 2D view, select our profile, close this, go back to our profile toolpath, and you'll see all of the settings are the same in here as well. But keep in mind there may be some additional settings down at the bottom that you may have to add back in, such as tabs or ramping or leads or anything like that. But if you're not using those, then it will remember the main items up at the top here. So we can click calculate and then preview and then double click on our waist. And now you can see we have the exact same project as we did on the previous sheet, except this time it's vertical where it will fit on your machine in the Y direction. Now, one other tip I wanna show you here is if you were to move this at all, let's say instead of centered, maybe you wanted it one inch from the lower left corner. So we can select everything, go to our move tool and you can move it in the absolute position in the lower left corner at one inch in the X, one inch in the Y, and you'll see that will move our design. But an important thing to remember is that your toolpath does not move with the design. So if we close this, turn on the visibility of our toolpaths, you can see they are still in the location that they were before, centered of your project. And you can see if we turn on the solid view, this is where our toolpaths are currently at, but our design is now in a new location. And if you didn't do anything with the toolpaths and then save them, even though you moved the design, the toolpaths are still gonna cut in the wrong location. So after you make any changes to the design, you wanna make sure you right click on these, go down to recalculate and recalculate. You can, in this case, you could do all visible toolpaths because we have those all checkmarked to turn on. 
So we can recalculate visible and you'll see it'll recalculate all the toolpaths and now they moved to the new location. So now if you went to your 3D preview, you can see they're in a different location now. That's because we have our old preview up. So we just have to reset our preview and you'll see the toolpaths are now in the lower left corner and we can preview all those. And now it will cut in a new location. So anytime you move, rotate, or resize any of your design, you want to make sure you recalculate that before you save the G-code to run on your machine. So that's all for this lesson. Hopefully these tips helped you out. And if they did, let me know below in the comments.